iPhone cameras are incredibly powerful, but to get the most out of them, you need an app that has the right features and controls to turn your vision into a reality. Today, we're gonna do a comprehensive review comparing all of the major camera apps, including Apple's newly released Final Cut camera. By the end of this video, you'll know exactly which app is best for you and the content that you wanna create. Let's dive in. Today, we're gonna to look at the pros and cons of Final Cut camera, Pro Camera by Moment, Kino, Beast Cam and Blackmagic Camera. With that being said, let's start with Final Cut Camera. I gotta say, I was so freaking excited when I heard about this app and it does some things really well, but man, it disappointed me as well. Starting with the pros, this app is free and has one of the cleanest interfaces of any camera app I've ever used, which makes sense as it's been designed by Apple themselves. It's got the familiar look of the default camera app, but with easy access to pro settings like video codec, dynamic range, resolution, and frame rate. A swipe up from the bottom reveals more pro controls like white balance, exposure compensation for auto exposure, or you can tap on auto to switch into manual exposure where you can control the shutter speed and ISO. Then we've got manual focus and orientation lock. Tapping the settings icon reveals another view of the limited, albeit pro camera settings with additions of stabilization and the ability to mirror the front camera. You'll notice with stabilization though, there is no action mode like they have in their default camera app. We have another tab for tools like a grid overlay, some aspect ratio guides, overexposure indication, also known as zebras, which will indicate any areas of your image that are too bright, along with a focus peaking tool that highlights the part of your image that is in perfect focus. Finally, in the audio tab, you've got a drop down where you can choose a different audio source if you've got a third party mic plugged in like this Hollyland Lark M2. We've also got this really nice smooth zoom control feature that is definitely the best built-in zoom control I've seen in any app. The biggest feature of this app though is the easy to use multi-camera system that syncs with Final Cut Pro for iPads. Here we can link up to four iPhones in monitor, change settings, and record all at once, easily allowing us to upload the footage to our iPad and cut between all the different camera angles. If you record podcasts, unboxings, cooking videos, or anything else that extra cameras helps with, this is gonna be a huge workflow boost. Granted, you will need multiple iPhones, an iPad, and a subscription to Final Cut on the iPad to get the most out of it. Another subtle bonus of this is using the same feature to simply work as an external monitor for filming on your iPhone, helping you use those higher quality back cameras while still seeing yourself, even allowing you to modify the settings however you like without needing to touch the iPhone itself. So those are the pros, let's touch on the cons. In my eyes, I see this app as what the default camera app always should have been, but we're still lacking so many core features, I'm gonna be stuck switching back and forth between the default app and the Final Cut camera apps. Now, I understand Apple made this app specifically for a multi-cam audience, but how hard would it have been to include the ability to take photos, slow motion videos, time lapses, and most importantly for me, cinematic mode videos all within this one pro hub of an app. I've always wanted to be able to manually control the exposure settings and the white balance of my cinematic videos, but the default app just doesn't allow you to do it. I don't know if it's a software limitation or what, but dang, to me, it seems like it would have been a no brainer to include cinematic mode in the Final Cut camera. Doing this would have made the Final Cut camera app the only camera app with pro controls that also includes a cinematic mode or blurry background mode. If it had done that, it definitely would have been number one on my list of apps. Up next, we've got the Kino app. Having been released very recently, this app has definitely climbed up in popularity really quick, and I understand why. Before we talk about Kino though, if you're finding this valuable, do me a favor and hit that subscribe button. It really helps support the channel so we can make more content just like this. Okay, so opening Keynote, you're gonna see a very straightforward and easy to use interface. Very similar overall to Final Cut camera. Video settings up top that we can change easily. Tap on auto to switch into manual exposure where you can change the settings. Manual focus and lens control at the bottom. Hitting the arrow will reveal some features like displaying an RGB waveform on screen for exposure and color monitoring. You can turn stabilization on and off and again, no option for advanced stabilization like action mode. You can display a basic grid, switch to the selfie camera, and then open up the settings menu. Within that menu, there's really only two notable settings. The first is within the video tab. 
allowing you to change the shutter speed control to shutter angle. Without getting overly complicated, this actually makes maintaining the proper shutter speed, which depends on your frame rate, much easier, helping to ensure that you have the perfect amount of motion blur at all times, which is a really important aspect of capturing cinematic looking videos. You'd simply want to set your shutter angle to 180 degrees and voila, you can basically leave it there 95% of the time. All you need to do from there to control the exposure is change the ISO. If you're outdoors where it's super bright, you'd want to add an ND filter. Or best of all, with your ISO as low as possible, you'd change the exposure of your image by manipulating the amount of light in real life with practical or professional lights. Now, the second notable setting is auto motion. Building off the previous topic of shutter angle to capture the ideal amount of motion blur, auto motion uses a different auto exposure algorithm to adjust and capture both ideal exposure and the best possible motion blur based on the scenario. This is a really powerful feature for people who don't know how to manually change the settings to their needs, but still want that cinematic motion blur. The last really useful feature of this app is instant grades, which are essentially LUTs or color grading presets built into the app that immediately change the look and feel of your footage. Although I personally like shooting my footage in a default color profile and then adding LUTs afterwards, this is a great feature for beginners who just want it all to be as seamless as possible. And some of these LUTs are actually pretty cool. Overall, Kino is a really nice, simple, and easy to use app that gives you the settings you definitely need without much more to overwhelm or confuse you. It is a new app though, so every once in a while it can feel a little buggy, like the subtle delay when switching between the different lenses, but big picture, it's a smooth and sleek app. When Kino first came out, I think it was a perfect fit for the crowd that wanted simple exposure settings and not much more. However, I will say with Final Cut Camera just being released, it's basically taken what Kino offers and made it smoother, sleeker, and easier to use in most situations. Not to mention Kino lacks the white balance control, which for me is a huge negative aspect. Also, Final Cut Camera is free compared to Kino, which costs $19.99 at the time of recording this video. Up next, we have Pro Camera by Moment, a longtime member of the elite pro camera apps made by the same Moment brand that makes popular smartphone lenses. There is a lot to love about this app, and it's one of the apps we teach in our online course, 14 Day Filmmaker. The interface is extremely polished, clean, and easy to use. The basic video settings are up top, exposure and white balance controls down below. For iPhone 15 users, Pro Camera, like all the other apps, supports the extremely high quality Apple log format. But for those of you who don't have an iPhone 15 yet, Moment Pro actually includes their own version of a log picture profile that can be used on any iPhone, no matter what the generation. This helps you get a little more dynamic range out of your shots, improving the quality, but granted, you'll still need to know how to color grade it. Either way, this is a standout feature in my eyes because all the other apps don't have their own log profile accessible to other iPhones. On top of that, like Keynote, you can also use LUTs as well. There aren't quite as many built in, but you can load your own custom LUTs. And to make things easier, I will actually give you a whole pack of LUTs I specifically designed for smartphone footage for free. But before I tell you how to get those LUTs, I'm gonna make you endure my pitch for 14 Day Filmmaker. There are a lot of courses and resources online to learn how to shoot and edit professional content, but very few come close in comparison to 14 Day Filmmaker in terms of both price and value. At the time of recording this video, we've taught over 130,000 students from around the globe and the results have been incredible. Have you ever wanted someone to just tell you exactly what you need to know with no fluff and no wasted time? Well, that is exactly what we do in 14 Day Filmmaker. We basically take eight months of learning on YouTube and install it into your brain over the course of just 14 days for less than the price of a trip to the grocery store. Not to mention you get hours of bonus content, cheat sheets, downloadable LUTs, sound effects, editing templates, practice footage, and more. In the core curriculum, you will learn the gear, the settings, the lighting, the composition, the movements, how to tell stories, how to edit like a pro, social media training, YouTube training, and commercial training. It's all in there and anyone who signs up through the link in the description beneath this video gets access to three programs in total. One version that focuses specifically on smartphones, one that focuses on more professional gear, and a third program that is a crash course on storytelling. Between these three resources, you will have literally everything you need to launch your channel, grow your brand or business, or even start a full-time business selling video services to clients. Like I said, the link to join is in the description, but if all you care about is getting those free LUTs and you don't wanna learn content creation super fast, there is another link in the description where you can download just the free LUTs. Okay, back to Pro Camera by Moment. 
Not only do I love that they give log profiles to everyone, no matter what iPhone you have, I also love that they include other modes outside of just video in their app. You can see they have video, photo, time-lapse, and slow shutter mode for getting those really creative shots. Outside of cinematic mode, which I don't believe Apple has given developers access to, and slow motion, you can pretty much do everything in this one app. Beyond that, tapping on the settings icon will reveal basically all of the settings both Final Cut Camera and Kino had, plus a handful of more like advanced bitrate options, additional ProRes options depending on your preference, audio options, and a whole slew of photography settings as well. Overall, Moment Pro is in my eyes the best all-around app so far that we've talked about in this video for people who truly want full creative control of their content. And for a one-time purchase of $8.99, I also think it's a great deal. All right, moving on, we've got Beast Cam, another app made by a smartphone lens manufacturer. And following the trend of this video, we're again getting a little bit more advanced. The interface has a slightly different look to it than the previous apps. One could call it a a little more overwhelming, but I personally love how it's all laid out and easy to access. Everything that you can control with the Pro Camera app is here, plus a few extras. Exposure, white balance, and focus are at the bottom. On the right, we have preset modes you can create, visual tools like focus peaking, zebras, and false color, all great things to have if you like to use them. Then on the left, starting from the top, we have video settings that take things up a notch. There's a hardware option to modify for particular lenses like an anamorphic lens. And after that, BeastCam is the first app in this lineup that has different modes of stabilization. Not just on and off, but a standard and cinematic mode. It's not technically action mode, the built-in crazy powerful stabilization of the default app, but it is very stable nonetheless. We also have more guide options than just the basic rule of thirds grid. I really like this one that helps you perfectly level your camera both vertically and horizontally. BeastCam also has a handful of aspect ratio guides as well if you plan on editing in anything other than 16 by nine. Moving down on the left-hand side, we have the video setting controls like resolution, frame rate, quality, bit depth, and Apple Log if you've got an iPhone 15. What I love here is we finally have the option to utilize those super high frame rates for slow motion video. In full HD resolution and 8-bit depth, you'll notice both 120 and 240 FPS options become available. This is the first app so far that unlocks slow motion, which I find so strange that none of the other apps didn't do this. Overall, I look at BeastCam as a slightly more robust and advanced version of the Moment app, albeit not quite as polished looking, if that's something that matters to you. For a single payment of $2.99, it's also a steal. The only benefit of the Moment app in my eyes is their built-in photo mode, their log picture profile that works on all iPhones, and their support of third-party LUTs while filming. And then finally, we have the big dog, the Blackmagic camera app. Blackmagic is a giant in the content creation industry, creating high-end cameras, the popular editing software DaVinci Resolve, other editing gear, and tons more. When they released this app in September of 2023, everyone got excited and the app definitely lived up to the hype. In the behind the scenes footage of Apple event commercials, which are now all being filmed on iPhones, you can see even Apple using this app to film their content. That is definitely saying something about the quality of Blackmagic's app. The interface may look a little overwhelming when you open it up, most similar to the BeastCam interface in my opinion. It's got all of your exposure, white balance, and focus controls along with tint control, which is a nice addition, especially if you use a filter on your camera that casts a green or magenta color over your video, which is a pretty common thing that happens with budget filters. Zoom and stabilization options on the right, along with multiple levels of stabilization, which is great. We have exposure compensation, focus control, and then a big menu of additional video options like custom LUTs, false color, safety zones, aspect ratio overlays, and grids are all in there. Then you've got focus peaking and zebras, both fully customizable to your liking, which this is the first app that's allowed you to customize these things. Unlike most of the other apps mentioned, you can access slow motion frame rates up to 120 frames per second with Blackmagic, and they have a cool feature that automatically slows down the footage in camera versus having to actually edit the footage first to stretch it out and turn it into slow motion. Inside the deeper menu settings, you're gonna see even more advanced options for video, recording, audio, and monitoring the content externally. They're one of the few apps that also has time-lapse functionality. 
Blackmagic is also the only camera app outside of Kino that features the shutter angle control as well as shutter speed, which is really nice. Regardless, I know Blackmagic has big plans for this app and they will continue developing it over time as they've already been adding plenty of new features here and there since the initial release. The only downsides as far as I can see is no built-in photo control, which is understandable considering how video focused Blackmagic is as a company. They also don't have a dedicated multicam feature like Final Cut Camera and there's no universal log picture profile for people who don't have an iPhone 15. All right, that was a lot of info on all of these apps. To conclude and kind of wrap all this up, as I've already mentioned, I do think all of these apps serve a specific type of creator really well. For people just getting into manually controlling their settings and want just the basics without getting overwhelmed, Final Cut Camera and Kino would be my go-to recommendations. Realistically though, I will say Final Cut Camera is superior in my eyes with the free price tag, the addition of white balance control, multicam potential, a smoother interface, and you just know Apple is going to come out and add even more things over time. And fingers crossed that one of those things is cinematic mode. For the pros out there, I still think Blackmagic is the ultimate full featured app that gives you the most control over your video. And for that reason, it's one of the main apps that we also teach in 14 Day Filmmaker. Blackmagic Camera has been my go-to camera app basically since it's come out and I plan on continuing to use it for longer form professional content like podcasts, YouTube videos, commercial shoots, and even professional short form content. If you use Beast Cam and that's what you really love, I think it's honestly almost identical to Blackmagic Camera outside of the small price tag. That was my previous go-to prior to Blackmagic Camera. And then finally, Pro Camera by Moment is the go-to hybrid app for people who really want their video and photo functionality all in one app. Not to mention, this is a really good app for people who don't have the Apple log in iPhone 15s. I'm curious though, after watching this video, which app do you think stands out as your favorite? Let me know in the comments below. Other than that, thank you so much for watching. Hit that subscribe button. Don't forget to check out Fortune Day Filmmaker, and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.